People might not have heard of the term neuromodulation. It's actually currently a very hot topic for individuals with a spinal cord injury. And there's emerging evidence showing that neuromodulation can restore critical functions throughout the human body. Clinicians, researchers, and individuals with a spinal cord injury themselves are very excited by the therapeutic potential of this strategy. So essentially, neuromodulation is any modification of nerves throughout the human body. And it can be in various forms. So it can be delivered chemically, through an electrical stimulus. You can target the brain using transcranial magnetic stimulation. By stimulating nerves, it might be possible to help improve different body functions. And these can range from movement, sensation, sexual functioning, bowel and bladder function. And the latter includes um, preventing incontinence, but also helping with emptying. So in spinal cord injury rehabilitation, neuromodulation can be applied in three main areas. The brain, the spinal cord, or anything in between. And what we mean here is the peripheral nerves. So functional electrical stimulation is a method of neuromodulation that can be used to stimulate peripheral nerves. And this then leads to skeletal muscle contractions. It's a very well established technique and it's used in physical therapy for individuals with a spinal cord injury. It can be used to help improve function certain gait movements for individuals with incomplete injury, but it should be emphasised that this is not a cure for spinal cord injury. The brain can also be stimulated using transcranial magnetic stimulation. Researchers are actually looking into this technique uh, in conjunction with upper limb uh, movements to see if this can enhance performance. Other evidence suggests that transcranial magnetic stimulation can be used to treat spasticity and pain. However, it's not commonly used in clinical practice currently. Neuromodulation can also be achieved with the use of certain drugs. One example of this that's currently used clinically would be baclofen, where it can be delivered directly to the spinal cord. Baclofen pumps are commonly prescribed to treat spasticity and they also can be used with neuropathic pain. Spinal cord stimulation can be delivered in two ways. One approach is epidural, and this requires an invasive surgery where a very tiny panel of electrodes are fitted into the epidural space over the dura of the spinal cord. This approach delivers a very focused electrical current into the spinal cord. Alternatively, without uh, surgery, you can do a non-invasive approach, which is called transcutaneous spinal cord stimulation. And this requires using um, common electrodes placed over the skin of the spinal cord to deliver an electrical stimulus. The research of epidural stimulation has primarily focused on the ability to achieve walking again. Now, these studies have achieved a lot of media attention, but also epidural stimulation can be used for other crucial bodily functions. Now, these include bladder and bowel control, and also bowel routine or bowel management time has been cut in half. Another area is looking at the control of blood pressure. So evidence suggests that spinal cord stimulation can prevent orthostatic hypertension. The current state of neuromodulation in clinical practice, some techniques are fairly well established, such as functional electrical stimulation and also the use of uh, baclofen pumps. Others, such as epidural stimulation, are still emerging techniques and therapies, and actually more evidence is required before these are used in the current healthcare system. Neuromodulation is currently a very exciting and very promising area. As you'll see with this series, the evidence is really starting to emerge that it can treat multiple dysfunctions for individuals with spinal cord injury.